Here we go. And we are live. And we are live. Hey, friends. Hey, we everybody. Are... <laughs> we are <Hello>. here. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah we're just we'll start in a couple minutes but thought we'd come on make sure i give people time to join us yeah come on in oh i'm on the wrong screen the water's fine <laughs> oh <laughs> trish i'll give you a moment to think i thought that oh, for our intro this trish, week i'll give you a moment to think i thought I, that uh -oh. for our intro this, this week thing. i'll give you a moment to think i thought uh um, Jen, do you have volume up on something? Because it's reverberating back into it. Oh, yeah, just a minute, because I was putting it up on the other screens. Oh, yeah, just a minute, because I was putting it up on the other screens. Oh, yeah, just a minute. How's that? There we go. There we go. Uh, so take a moment to think about something that encouraged you this week. Okay. So while we wait for people to join us, someone sent us some love already. Thank hey, you, hi. Catherine. I see, I see you. Catherine Hicks joined us. Hi. Catherine. Crap. I Sorry. See. Um, <clears throat> yep. Thank you, whoever did that. <laughs> that would be me. I was just getting ready. <laughs> and then we got some weird posts. Hello, friend. Hi, lady. Oh. I can't remember your name. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I know. You told us last week. And I'm so short-term memory. Yeah, over on YouTube, Lady Sastone. Can you remind us of your first name? <laughs> Shirley. Shirley. I'm going to write that down, Shirley. <laughs> And hopefully I'll remember that to. I wrote it down. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We're two peas in a pod with that memory thing. So I'd have you join us again, Shirley. That's awesome. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm, I'm glad you appreciate that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the brain. This is your brain on life. Uh, yeah, <laughs> this is my brain. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, we've got a couple more minutes here, um, and then we'll let uh, we'll begin. We'll what give everybody a couple more in? minutes to join us. <clears throat> so Shirley, thanks for joining us, and I think I saw Catherine Hicks is here too, and I'm not sure who else. But ladies, maybe comment. Tell us what is something that encouraged you this week. Hey, Joan. <laughs> Hi, Joan. Nice to see you. <laughs> we can see Joan and she's commenting. So Joan <laughs> is here helping us out again for all of yes. you viewers out there. She is a rock star uh, when it I'm, comes to I'm going to be um, Jules on Facebook so I can see everybody's comments. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds great. There. <laughs> yes, Jules is unable to join us tonight, but yeah. she is always available for questions if we can't answer them. Most definitely. Hi, Paula. Hi, honey. How are you? I'm confused because things go. It's <laughs> like if I wave over here, I have. <laughs> I'm so glad you could join us tonight, Paula. <laughs> it's me. You know, oh my goodness, it's me. Oh, I have the same problem too. <laughs> Paula's over at a uh, uh, Facebook. Yes, she is. So, <clears throat> hopefully, a couple more will join us here. I got my notification, um, so we're doing something right. Great. <laughs> well. Uh, Trish, do you want to start with introducing yourself to the crowd here? Well, sure. My name is Trisha Geison, and I actually have a business that's called, I actually have a business. <laughs> that's how that sounded. <laughs> I have a business that's called Pink Poodle Jewelry Studio. I live in a small town, and that's where my studio is located. Um, 
I do some work with some other companies as well, being a designer for them and doing videos. I just really have enjoyed jewelry making for about 15 years and met a lot of very cool, wonderful people during that time. So that's about it. That's the basics. <laughs> How about you, Amber? Come on up. <laughs> So my name is Amber Scott, and I too truly have a business. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Carolyn. Glad you could join us. Um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, just so you guys are aware, uh, it is Joan posting under Jules tonight. Um, she had a meeting and couldn't join us, but uh, we're always all three of us, and Jules are available for questions. Um, but yeah. Uh, my business, <laughs> I couldn't think, is called Mount Nittany <laughs> Creations, and I'm also in central Pennsylvania. Trish and I live about an hour apart, but um, I designed for Jules and then uh, also for another company, and I sell on Etsy, Facebook, Instagram, all those kinds of places, and we're excited to be here with you guys tonight. Uh and we are going to answer the question, what is something that's encouraged us this week? So for me, I have a 15-year-old daughter who's autistic, and she has just come out of her shell. And she joined the basketball team her freshman year of high school, and she actually played for almost a whole quarter on Tuesday oh, night and awesome. tried to make a shot. So that was my encouraging thing Aww. this week. Uh, Trish, do you have a, an encouraging thing? <clears throat> Well, the most encouraging person in my life is Amber and she, Aww. I talk to her every day and she keeps me inspired and wanting to keep move, move forward in the worst of times. So, um, and my encouraging thing today was to be able to talk to my friend and have, she lifts me up every day. So. Oh, thanks friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'm going to switch cameras here and come back to me in a moment. There we go. So, yeah, uh, I saw Carolyn mention that she's in the middle of the ice storm. Yeah, all my kids' schools are sending messages canceling school. It hasn't hit us yet, but it, it's raining, and hopefully it won't hit us uh, until a little bit later as I wait for our one daughter to get home from her basketball game. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> And that's so fun, Shirley, you're watching the posts from Tucson. I know that Trish and I, and probably Joan, would all have loved to have been there. Uh, one day, we will make it out there. <laughs> yes, but, hopefully. So one of our friends uh, does like a little encouraging statement or something before she does her videos and stuff. So I thought we could try that out. And somebody recently sent this to me. It says, you are... You, my friend, are ridiculously brilliant. Just believe it. And I want you guys to all remember that, that you are ridiculously brilliant. And all you have to do is believe it. Um, That's right. So let me get this to focus. There we go. All right. So tonight we are going to continue working with the beads in the bag. But we thought it would be fun to show you how to warp. This is called the baby loom. So... I plan to take some of my extras from the beads in the bag and make a set of earrings. So I thought it would be fun to show you how to warp a baby loom. And maybe you're really new to looming and the baby loom might be a good fit for you. Um, it's probably the least complicated <clears throat> of the looms, but uh, definitely is the smallest too. <laughs> So I'm going to warp here with some wildfire. Hopefully you can see that okay. So there's nothing more to the baby loom than this. So I'm going to turn her over. The same thing as the original jewel loom. You have the knob on the back. And I am just going to take my wildfire and tie a knot here. There we go. So, and just like the regular <clears throat> loom, 
we just had the notches and same with all the other looms. Uh, the notches might look a little different, but they're almost exactly the same width apart on all of them or should be very close to it. So I'm just going to take my wildfire, lay it in one of the, the grooves or notches, come all the way over to the other side, holding that tension, come around. I'm going to go around twice just because you don't have... You don't have the metal rod on this one to hold it. I'm going to leave one space for my seed beads in there. <clears throat> Come back over to the other side. Wrap around. Making sure I'm holding my tension. And same. Leave one space. Hold the tension. Turn it over, wrap it around, hold the tension. <laughs> pretty, pretty basic. And pretty much it's the same method you use on all the looms. Now with the original, I probably wouldn't go around the knob twice because with the um, metal rod, when you take that out, that'll, hold, that'll create even more tension for you. So wrap it around and I'm going to come up one more time and I think I'm going to end there. Now I decided to do the beads in a bag. Hey, Yolanda. Um, I decided instead of doing the hemp to do the wildfire because I am going to do a slide clasp for the earrings. So, so I'm holding the tension. And I'm getting my lovely little nippers out here. These nippers are amazing. And I have the same problem. Where am I in the screen? <gasps> so then I'm going to hold that tension. I'm holding all of it, as you can see, coming back around all of the warps and then my fingers aren't quite working well enough there what I want to do is tie a knot here there we go <laughs> hand uh, pliers come in handy for all kinds of things here and then we're gonna pull and then do it again so go around all the warps And then hold it up so I can get it through and pull it taut. Can you hear that? <laughs> so then to you would um, continue on the same manner as you would. Sorry, I'm looking for my jewel loom needles. So you would get those with your baby loom as well. Um, I think that's what you get with your baby loom is the needles and the loom. And so we would, I'm gonna show you how to weave just one here. I'm going to get some wildfire. You don't need a lot with the baby loom. <laughs> so probably just about a wingspan. But one of the reasons we wanted to show this to you guys is that um, Jules is so generous with her kits. There is so much goodness in one beads in the bag kit. Like, and you can make multiple projects. So this is just another project along with the bracelet that you can make using the beads in a bag. So I just flattened the end of the thread. That's a little, little technique 
to make it easier to put your thread into the needle. And you pull it through. I'm gonna tie it off here. So glad to have you all join us tonight. I don't know how many of you are being affected by the ice. What we were working on last, last time, and I've got a little bit. So just the, this wisdom warrior is the same size as the original. So just to kind of give you an idea of what they look like. And then you want to take your 80 seed beads, just like you would for the base of the bracelet that Trish is going to show you more of looping tonight. And I made it one, two, three, four, five across. So I'm going to pick up five seed beads. And just like all the, the other looms, so just bring it all the way down, put it underneath. So you always go under first. The first one's always the toughest. Line them up and go back through the top. Uh, so, hey, Debbie, so glad you could join us. So in order to lock those beads in, just like all the other looms, you go underneath first and then over the top, <clears throat> making sure that you are under the warps. And then you can always check if you're on top, you can see the needle through, through there. And that, my friends, is how you warp and begin beating on a baby jewel loom. All right, I'm going to pass it over to Trish, and she's going to continue on uh, with showing you making loops. Yes, ma'am. Okay, guys. Well, last week we decided when we were doing our bracelet that we were going to use four 11 o seed beads. And I have been putting the 8 o's that are in the mix with the beautiful uh, focal beads. And I've been using those and then putting my focal in the middle. So this is what we kind of have so far. Today I want to show you a couple tricks and I want to be able to show you how to do the loops on the edge and to put one of our feathers on that we have from this beautiful kit. So first and foremost here, what I'm going to start with, if you can see here, guys, we're coming out of, let me get my fingers right here. We're coming out of this row right here. Okay. You can see that string coming out. And I don't know that I've ever seen Jules teach this, but it's something that I've learned by making lots of loops and doing um, many bracelets. I like to lock in the thread every so often because I feel like it just gives me a little bit more stability with the piece. So all I'm going to do there is I'm coming out through this bead on the edge and I'm going to try to get close so you guys can see. I'm going to go in back in through that same bead i'll put it down in through that same bead from behind and i'm going to run that needle back out so in essence that is locking everything in for us and i want it to come back out on the top so i'm gonna have to finagle it a little bit <clears throat> so i'm kind of bending my needle and getting it to come out through there okay oops and then just pulling it. And like I said, to me, I'm just locking that in a little bit. We're just wrapping that little bit of string 
around that bead. And if you can see that, it's really tiny, but we just wrap that right there and it's going to keep anything that we've done so far. It's going to keep it nice and taut and tight onto our uh, bracelet. So what we're going to do here, I want to do um, a feather on here on this end. So I'm going to pick up and you can do as many uh, beads as you like if you want your um, your your loops to be big and full and long. That's your prerogative if you want them to be tight up against yours as well. But I think I am going to do, I'm going to stick with the four beads. I think I got two, four, six, apparently. There's four. Okay. And you know what? Let's do six. Let's do six. Let's just be a little wild on the wild <laughs> side tonight. <laughs> so... And then what I'm going to do, I have those six beads on there, those 11 O's, okay, there. And after that, I'm going to put on one of my feathers, and I'm just going to run that string right up through the loop of that. Okay, and you know it'll be a solid connection because that's a solid ring. I wouldn't advise using jump rings to sew on anything because there's a, a very good chance that your string will slip right out of it. So you don't want to do that. So let's put on six more. And I'm just one of these. I'm a, I'm a dipper with my <laughs> seed beads. <laughs> I kind of go through the pile and keep it kind of piled up and then kind of dip through it to get the amount that I'm ready, that I want to <laughs> use. I mean, <laughs> so, so what I'm going to do here, guys, you can see this with the, the beads and the feather in the middle. I'm going to go into that next row and I'm going to go two beads over and come up. Okay. See me coming up there and I'm going to pull and that's going to give us our loop with our feather on the end of that row. Okay. So there you go. So now that we're in this next row, we're two, we're two beads in. So I'm going to do another loop with some more beautiful uh, natural stone and check glass. So we're going to do four more. And I have gone back and done my loops after the fact. You can do it. Um, it is a little bit more challenging because then you're kind of looking and pushing rows and stuff like that. But you can't. it can be done. Let's see here. Okay, so we have our four. And one of our eight O's, and I think we'll do um, some, I think that's citrine or something to that effect. Maybe some agate. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. You but, know better than me. Yeah. <laughs> so much better at that. It does look like citrine to me, but, you know, who knows? <laughs> so I put four, four more beads on. Whoops. I did that backwards. So that's something you have to be careful of too, guys. So I picked up my seat, my 11 O's and then went to put my 8 O on. I don't want to do that. I'm going opposite of the way that I did it on this side. So I'm going to pick up my 8 O first and then put on my four 11 O's. Okay. All right. One more. See, that's why I don't pick them up because I'm not the best at that. I'm a different. So anyway. <laughs> it's all good <laughs> so what I'm going to do then is those two beads that we went through I'm going to come back around over top of those and through the outside bead okay and I'm going to just push this the whole way across because next I want to be able to put a loop on the other side so I'm going to come out the other side and also, guys, you can put loops on, on both sides. If you're that adventurous and that's something, you know, you, you want to do, absolutely. You could do a loop on this side and then come back through and do a loop on that side of the bracelet. It does look really cute. I've done it before. But your call, as always. Do you mean on the edge, Trish? Is yeah, on the on... edge. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was just making sure I was following. <laughs> yep. Yep. On both edges. I've done bracelets like that, and I really like it. And because my theory always is more is more and or go, big or go, home. <laughs> go big or go home, those type things. So, um, so I'm back through that row that we just put that loop on, on the other side. So I'm going to do 
So I have four more beads here that I'm going to cross over. So I'm going to do a bit. It's going to look a little bit bigger of a loop because I'm crossing more beads. But let's do four. <clears throat> four 11 O's. An 8 O. Let's see. What do we want now? It's all so pretty. Ooh, <laughs> this looks like a very pretty piece of agate. Let's go for that. I think with that. Isn't that pretty? That is. And an 8-0, because remember, we're going backwards of the pattern that we did. And then our 11-0s. And there's four. There we go. There's four. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to go back over top of those four beads and put my needle back back through the fourth. So we're basically just making a big circle. Okay. If I'm not describing it well, I apologize, but <laughs> that's what makes sense in my brain anyway. And who's to say with that brain of mine? So <laughs> the way <Aww>. it works. <laughs> the way it works sometimes. But yes. Um okay. There's our loop. And you can see as that loop's coming in there, guys, that's what we're doing. We're just bringing that loop around. And I'm on the other side. Okay? So now, say, for instance, if I wanted to put a loop coming out of that row, but I want it on the other side, what am I going to do? Well, the easiest solution is that I've found is I will skip over the first bead on the edge and just put my needle down through the first bead and the second bead and run it then across again. So then I have the ability to make a loop on the other side. Let me get it through all the beads though. Make sure I'm coming out where I want to. There we go. So I'm just bringing that across. And that kind of locked it in by me doing that. And my, I'm getting a little wild. <laughs> Is how I do. So, yeah. And that just kind of locked it in as well on that side. So, I'll give that a little tug. And you can see, guys, as I'm working, my my loom moves a lot. That's just how I do it. That's what works best for me. I put it in the positions I, I you know, I don't just keep it straight and work. Some people can do that. But mm -hmm. I'm much too much of a complicated person to be able to do that. <laughs> so, so, this loop, I'm going to put our six seed beads on One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> and I'm going to put a piece of fire polish and six more beads. And that's the nice thing about these kits, guys. You, everyone could get the same kit, but every piece will look a little bit different because you're sweet. making, you're, yeah, you're making different choices about your beads and your loops and all that. I do have my glasses on, believe it or not. But <laughs> as I'm looking up, that's what I'm doing, guys. I'm pulling this up to my eyes to look at it. That's how old I am. So <laughs> <laughs> You're not that old. So huh? <laughs> the, thank you. But so then I'm just going to go into that next row. And I'm going to do, I'm going to go across three beads and come up this time with it. Okay. And don't be afraid to experiment, guys. I think for myself, when I was learning, yes, I had a very good teacher. Uh, Amber was awesome. <laughs> but um, I started experimenting with it. And I started using different techniques and different designs, you know. And that's what this is about. This isn't about, you know, everything is strict and you have to do it an exact certain way. You make it your own. And I feel like that's what Jules is on that page with us. She She's who inspires us to make everything our own. You know, mm -hmm. don't be afraid to do that. So we're on four beads here. And I'm going to pick up an 8 and two pieces of fire polish. I'm getting crazy up in this oh, place. Oh, boy. <laughs> Watch out. Here we come. <laughs> All right. And another seed bead. I don't know if you can see. 
and then our, our four more. How are we doing on time there, friend? Uh, we're doing well. So okay. if you want to. Maybe do one more after this? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I've got my, my fire polish on there. And I'm just going to go back through, do my loop, loop backward, and go through that first bead again, and then go across the whole row so I can catch a loop on the other side. And I'm going to come out, I'm going to angle my, my needle a little bit just so I pop out that last bead on the top. So I, the needle pops out of that last bead on the top. Okay. And see, because I put those two fire polish on there, my leap, my, my leap, my, <laughs> my leap, blah, blah, blah. Um, my, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> my loop looks slightly bigger because really it is because I put those two beads side by side. So it gives it a little bit more um, depth and interest. Okay, so I'm going to turn my loom. We're going to do one more loop here. And I'm going to put my four. 11 O's on, two, three, four, our 8 O's bead, and this beautiful, I don't know what this is, but it's really pretty. Um, my first guess is an agate, but, you know, <laughs> and if, 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 if ever in doubt, you know, it's either Jasper or agate, you know. So true. <laughs> oh, that piece doesn't want to go over the needle. Of course. Of course. We'll talk to him about that later. Okay. There we go. And then our Edo. And four more beats. Four more 11 O's. One, two, three. And four. Okay. So we're coming out this side, guys. <clears throat> so I'm going to make my my loop around and I'm going to go back in the three beads back in that third bead I mean and go across all three beads and come out on top I'm going to angle my needle so I come out on top and just give that a pull and there you go now, what I'll do at this point, I'm going to go ahead and lock this in at this point because um, one good thing is, and if you're going to come back to it, if you lock it in on the end, you don't have to worry about something getting a hold of your thread. I have pets. I have a, ro a robot vacuum that likes to grab <laughs> onto my thread sometimes. So if I lock this in, then there's less chance that my beads are just going to fly off with this string. Okay. Yes. So I'm just going to go back through that last bead. And lock it in. That's a great little tip. Thank you. Yeah, Debbie mentioned earlier that it was a great tip. Well, thank you, so. Debbie. I appreciate that. So there we go. We're all locked in and ready to come back to it when we're ready. You know awesome. what I mean? So yeah. there you go. And I see Carmen has said hi to everyone. So hi, Carmen. Glad you could join us tonight, Carmen. Yes, and most definitely. Most definitely. Um, but I'll flip back over to me here really quick and show you what I've done. So <clears throat> I have gotten this far on my earrings. And then we will be doing beads in a bag again uh, the end of this month. So yes. I will yeah. finish up the looping here. And I will show you how to finish that off um, at the end of the month. So I will unspotlight us here if I can figure that out. There we go. Oh, I got to flip my camera. <laughs> Trying to do too many things, right? Oh, it happens. It happens. <laughs> oh, no, your internet's, internet's getting, getting a little awful. slow there, Trish. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I, I hear myself echoing. I don't know what... What's going on there? Is the team okay now? Or? Uh, I think 
Yeah, you're just moving slower, but. Uh, Facebook user, thanks for making that comment. Um, uh, if you give StreamYard permission, I'll be able to more directly comment towards you. But uh, somebody over on Facebook says, oh, that's a cool way to use it. So yeah, um, so I'm excited to see how these earrings come out. I'll be using a slider clasp, which we will also be using for our um, pattern, which will be next week. So yep. next week will be our That'd pattern. Be uh, so if you don't have the pattern yet, it's uh, in, in Jules's shop. Make sure you head over there and get that. And you can work along with us as we'll be working on that next week. Yeah, her seed bead that she picked for this um, oh. pattern are absolutely gorgeous. So beautiful. I was playing around with it the other night and I'm like, wow, these <laughs> they're super <laughs> pretty. I just couldn't help the drool. Oh. You know? <laughs> Yeah, so that's what we'll do next week. Uh, the third week of February will be the unboxing, uh, as long as we have that. <laughs> yeah, the Creative <laughs> the, Soul box. Or, the or, new Creative Soul, uh, Creative Soul Jewel box. Jewel box. Yes. We'll there get we it. Go. We'll get it eventually. <laughs> and then the last Thursday will be another round of beads in a bag. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Come back and spend next Thursday at seven o'clock with us as well, guys. Yeah. It's so fun to be with you guys. Um, yeah. We are looking for a way to chit chat online with you guys. So if you know of something, something like discord, something like Facebook groups, um, let us know. Uh, we want to be able to chit chat with you at other times. Uh, you yes. can just, send us an email or mess uh text jules jules has a texting number um where she sends us messages uh so you can text her she doesn't send them very often but you can text her at that number that is scrolling across the screen and i think um joan will probably put it in the comments for you but join that and she'll let you know what's going on um also, make sure you like Jules's YouTube. Um, oh, yes, definitely. And, uh, subscribe. Make sure you like this uh, video. Uh, and if you miss some of it, it will be available for replay. So um, am I missing anything? I don't think so. I think you covered it all quite well there, dear. <laughs> it helps I have a list over here <laughs> yes I would think so I, because I'm like I, no way would I remember all that stuff so. uh -uh. that's why I'm asking if I forgot anything um, but yeah so Trish and I love coming at you Absolutely. each week and uh, tell your friends about us Yes, please. Uh, bring them along <laughs> so we can have more beauty buddies because we yeah. love beauty buddies Jules has some awesome stuff coming for her <laughs> kids. So she just is buying a whole bunch of yummy goodness beads. So, yes, uh, I, I can't, can't wait. I know. I can't <laughs> wait to see them. So, yeah. So all kinds of yummy goodness over on her website, um, jewelloom.com. Make sure uh, if you have a chance to use our affiliate links, uh, that helps us out to keep coming at you live each week um and that kind of stuff Absolutely. so yeah and Catherine, you're not late honey you can always watch the replay it's always there for you but we're certainly glad you stopped over oh hey Catherine. so glad and you're welcome shirley and hopefully we'll remember when we see <laughs> lady sassstone healthy journey next week we will remember that that's surely <laughs> surely <laughs> we will remember and it looks like uh, Tasha said, thank, uh, looking forward to our next video. That means so much, Tasha. Thank you, Tasha. Um, we appreciate you. Thank yeah, you. We, we enjoy doing it. And you guys you guys uh, make it possible for us yeah. to be able to do it. And it's so fun. Yeah. So anyways, till next week. Bye. Have Bye. a great Bye. week and stay See warm. <laughs> stay warm and keep on beating, babies. Ha, 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 ha.